Hello Internet and welcome to another tutorial video for Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. In today's episode we'll be talking about the auto walk and auto drive features that exist in the game. Now we've been covering things related to vehicles in the last few episodes and I thought I'd throw in a short video about these things because it's a pretty great feature. Although it's been in the game for a while, auto drive did receive a major update uh, probably in 2022, I don't really remember. But this update took it from a little sloppy and prone to collisions to the point where auto drive is now more accurate than a lot of players. Anyway, this feature is exactly what it sounds like with a few simple key presses you can set a path and then when you execute the automatic movement the game will take over and move you to that location. It works for characters that are on foot but it also works when you're driving a vehicle. It's mostly very simple and straightforward but there are a few things to know about it which of course we'll cover in this video. Now I do want to be really clear here this is not an auto explore feature. You can't just hit a button and have your character run around exploring the map automatically. This is for areas that you've already been to previously and for a lot of situations you really only want to use it in areas that you've cleared out the enemies. So you can't just pick a black spot on the map 10 miles away and say go here. That's not really what it's about. Most of the time it'll be like oh I have to walk six blocks to this house that I've been looting and instead of pressing left 300 times I can just flip to the map screen, hit a few buttons and have the game do the work for me. And just to pop in here with an addendum, I just today learned about another form of auto movement. I had no idea this existed, but it lets you auto move in a specific direction from the main game screen. Since I just learned about this after recording the initial bit of this video, I might have said some things like uh, this is the only way to do it or something like that, which I can't actually edit out. However, I promise we will cover that in this video, even if it doesn't sound like it. Right, but anyway, to access auto move, you'll need to open your map screen. It cannot be done from the main game screen. The map command is the lowercase m key by default. Default. Once you're in the map menu, which we've never covered in a tutorial, I guess, and I probably should at some point, but once you're on the map screen, your current tile will be selected. The blinking cursor here indicates this position and you can move that indicator with uh, whatever keys you normally use to move your character. So you're going to move the indicator to the tile that you wish to move to. You'll then press the capital W key to create a route which will then be displayed using blue exclamation points. Now yours may look different from mine here. I changed my dark blue to teal or cyan or whatever this is just to have better visibility on YouTube. Now unfortunately once created you cannot adjust this path in any way. So maybe, for example, the route is going to take you through a tile that you would prefer to avoid. You cannot actually do anything about that. This is the only path that will generate from your current location to that selected location. However, you can try selecting a different tile and pressing the capital W key again in a new spot, which will generate a completely new path. So basically what I'm saying is that if you have to take a long journey and it's taking you somewhere you don't want to go, maybe instead of doing that, you break it down into three smaller journeys where you have more control over your destinations. Once this path has appeared, if your indicator is still over your destination, you can press the capital W key again. This will then give you a prompt asking if you're sure you want to auto move to that location. If you select yes, then the game will take over and you'll begin moving. Whether you're on foot or in a vehicle, you will then be returned to the main game screen to follow your character's movements across the map. You can cancel this movement by pressing the key that you normally use to pass a turn, and for me that's the 5 on my numpad, I think the other one is the period key. Interrupts also will work while you're auto moving, so if you come across an enemy, you will receive the same prompt you normally would for being interrupted. And this will happen regardless of whether you're on foot or you're driving a car. Now this is ultimately a good thing, if you're driving and suddenly spot a turret in the road, you probably want to assess your situation before you continue. And these do work regardless of whether you have safe mode enabled or not, but it is based on what distractions you have set in the distraction manager. Now as a new player, I wouldn't worry about the distraction manager, we're not going to cover that here. By default, we have a lot of these notifications, so you're going to know before you plow into a horde of zombies. Alright, and now let's talk about the auto travel mode. This is, in my opinion, less useful overall than what we just discussed, uh, but it has a time and a place. This is the auto movement that I mentioned at the top of the show, which is uh, brand new to me, I didn't know this existed. Now as far as I can tell, this does not have a key bound by default, but whether it is or isn't, you can see it in the keybinds menu. Press the question mark key on your keyboard and then search for auto, it will be listed there as auto travel mode. Once you've bound a key for this command, you can then press it while you're on the main game screen. 
At least in Altica, this will then display a yellow square around your character when you move to indicate that it's enabled. There will also be a message printed in the log when you toggle it on or off. Now, if you hold a movement key, your movement will automatically path around obstacles. In other words, if I went into the forest and simply held any movement key without this mode enabled, I would eventually come to a stop against a tree or uh, I would get a prompt for dangerous terrain. However, if I do this with auto travel mode enabled, my character will automatically path around trees and do its best to keep me from stepping onto thorny bushes. Now, like I said earlier, this is brand new to me, despite, you know, I have many, many hours in this game. I have absolutely no idea when it was added or how often this will actually be useful in your average game. Even so, at the very least, it seems like a fantastic tool for when you want to move through a forest. Now, the only issue I've seen here is with safe mode. The other auto travels that we talked about earlier in the video will interrupt you if you spot an enemy. This mode, however, does not do that unless you have safe mode enabled. Now we've never covered safe mode in any of these tutorials, mostly because I never use it personally, so I'm not like super familiar with it. It can be toggled on and off using the exclamation key, I believe is the default key bind, and yeah, I would recommend it if you're going to be using this and just holding down a movement key. If there are other use cases for this mode, someone please hit me up in the comments so other people uh, can see that. As I said, I'm not very familiar with it. And with that, we're going to go back to the, uh, I mean, whichever part of the video I'm going to splice this into, so it might be a little bit of an awkward cut. And that is ultimately the whole spiel about auto movement. It's very straightforward, but now I've got a bunch of miscellaneous information that might be helpful to you. First of all, while auto drive is pretty fantastic at avoiding cars and wrecks in the road, it is not flawless. I have not personally seen any collisions outside of the testing for this video. I did actually crash, which we'll talk about uh, here in a moment. But anyway, I don't want you to assume that just because it's very good that it's completely safe. There is a chance that you will collide with something. And for the record, that is only talking about static objects. When it comes to zombies, auto drive kind of falls apart. It won't have you plowing through zombie hordes and it doesn't really avoid them either. Because zombies can move, they can block your path. You will get a warning like I described above, but if you ignore that warning, auto drive will most likely continue driving as best that it can and then return control to you as soon as the zombie comes in front of it. Now this is a bit of a problem because auto drive only moves at 12 miles per hour even on large open areas. So if you're stopped in front of a zombie or a horde of zombies, you're not going to have the momentum to easily crash through them. You may grind to a halt with the collisions and if you're like me, you probably forgot to close your car doors and now you're being eaten. And because of its difficulties with enemies, you should avoid using it in any capacity really in populated areas. Auto drive is otherwise very good at avoiding obstacles, and I can't really state that enough. If you're a returning player, you might remember it not being very good, but the rework really did improve how it functions. I even made a video at one point uh, with an obstacle course because, uh, I don't know, and the system performed really, really well. Another note for returning players, I remember this feature being really choppy and jarring when it was first implemented. Implemented. It felt like as it was kind of animating you moving across the screen it would drop a lot of frames but that seems a lot smoother now I had no issues with it. But anyway, now let's talk a bit about the limitations of this system. Auto walk will pretty much take you anywhere that you want to go. When it was first implemented, I remember it didn't work underground, but now it does, so you know, hooray. And this really helps with those long stretches, like as you're walking through subways and whatever. With auto walk, you can pick more or less any tile on the map and the game will execute. Where exactly you end up in that tile is a bit of a question for me. I think it aims for like the center of that particular map section. So you might actually end up in a closet or bathroom and, and wonder, you know, why did the game pick this as my destination? You know, it is what it is. You have no control really over where specifically in like a house you will end up, for example. Auto walk also works in forests. It will path you around trees and bushes with no real issues and it should mostly avoid dangerous terrain. In other words, it's not going to let you walk into a sharp bush or deep water or any similar dangerous tile. It will prompt you before that happens. Now I'm sure there are some bugs or occasional failures with that system but again you'll be given a prompt before you enter a dangerous tile so it should be fine. Auto drive however does not actually work in the forest. 
If you're driving a vehicle and you're trying to set a location to travel to, it won't even let you select a forest tile. The reality is that our forests contain a lot of densely packed bushes and overgrowth and trees. Even if you were in a motorcycle, for example, which is narrow and easier to maneuver than a full car, you would still have a lot of difficulty moving through those areas. As such, it just flat out will not let you path through or into a forest while you're driving. And if I recall correctly, when the auto drive update first came out, it was completely restricted to roads as well. You weren't even able to select just open grass in a field and auto drive into it. However, that is no longer the case. You can actually path through large open spaces off-roading. However, the pathing of auto drive will almost always prioritize roads whenever it can. This may lead to suboptimal pathing. It might make you go around a forest using roads, for example, when instead you could drive a much shorter path through the grass. Now this is again where you may want to break your journey down into smaller chunks to to, uh, like coax the game into doing things the way you want it to. Now the other issue encountered in the early days of the system came when trying to cross a bridge. Our bridges actually go up a Z level as we move across them. Basically you go up a ramp so that you're higher and then descend on the opposite side. Anyway, auto drive didn't really handle this Z level transition very well. Unfortunately, this has not been resolved, at least based on my testing here today. When attempting to auto drive over a bridge, it will drive close to the point of the ramp and then cancel auto drive because it can't see a path forward. Now once I was on top of the bridge, I was able to get it to path automatically down the other side, but it did crash immediately into the railing, so I wouldn't recommend that. Just manually drive across bridges, it's not a big deal. Also, that is, I think, the first time I ever got a crash using the auto drive system, which I found, you know, obviously during testing here today. So that's really not great, but also, whatever, it's still an amazing system. And uh, yeah, those are the major notes that I had, really, I guess. Like I said, it's a pretty straightforward system, and it looks like some of the previous limitations have been lifted. Driving through fields, for example, I was surprised in my testing that they had resolved that. I didn't actually know that. I don't use the feature very often, personally. I've played since way before all of that stuff existed, so I'm a bit stuck in the ways of doing things manually. Right, but that's all I've got here for you today. Everyone, thank you so much for watching. I've been on a roll lately, releasing these videos a little bit more regularly. Talking about vehicles and stuff has been really straightforward, and these have come pretty easily to me as I've worked on them. I'll be back in the near future with more tutorial content, and I'll see you next time.